Hi, and welcome to CEPI Academy. Today, I'll be walking you through all of the necessary steps required to gather a complete and thorough site survey. As you might know, one of the first steps in engineering design is to gather all of the known information about the existing site that the project will be installed on. In order to gather all of that data, it's important to have a checklist and a plan when visiting the site. Today, I'll be walking you through what to do before a site survey, during a site survey, and after a site survey in order to ensure that we have all of the information we need. Let's get started. Before we begin the site survey, we'll need to gather any general information about the site, including address, local utility and permitting jurisdiction information, and any conditions on site that we might need to be aware of before we go visit. For that, I find Google Earth to be an excellent tool to get a preliminary site survey drawn up. Here I've got the building uh, in view. For this, I'll be using a ruler tool to measure out the rough proportions of the building and translating them onto paper. Once I've got the general outline of the building drawn up, I'll next want to draw up any large and obvious rooftop obstructions and their relative locations to the edges of the roof. This is the outline that we'll be bringing with us out to the site. Notice I haven't put any dimensions on here yet because we'll be verifying those in the field once we're up on the roof. Before we do the site survey, it's important to call ahead and schedule an appointment to figure out a time to come out and do the site survey. We've done that, and we're here at the SEPI Solar office. We're gonna meet up with the facilities manager to get the keys we need to get into the locations we need to complete the site survey. Let's head on in. Hey, Rich. Hey, Connie. Hey, um, we're gonna be walking around the site a little bit, uh, doing a little survey for the PV system we're putting on the roof. Um, I was hoping we could get into like the electrical room, uh, maybe take a look out in the back at the roof, maybe get up on the roof as well. Um, if we can get the keys from you, um, you know, we should be in and out. It won't be in your hair for too long. No worries, um, come on in yep. and I'll go up and give you the key. Thanks. Here's the key. And, Thank you. And uh, in the back and everything, and the door locks by itself. So okay. how about it? All right. Have Thank fun. you. Okay. So one of the first things we want to look at in a site survey is the roof condition. Um, for residential systems, uh, that typically means maybe getting up inside the attic, uh, taking pictures of some of the rafters or the trusses that are present, um, and then of course getting up on top of the roof as well to get a look at the roof condition and, uh, and see, what, you know, see what kind of condition it's in. Uh, in commercial buildings like this one, usually the roof is open, so it gives us a good view of all the rafters and the roof underlayment that we can see here. Um, it's generally a good idea to get photos and possibly measurements. So if we have a scissor lift or a, a really tall ladder, we could get up there and take a closer look at the rafters. Alternatively, or I should say additionally, it's generally a good idea to see if existing building plans are available. Um, with those building plans, we can verify the exact sizes and spacings of the rafters up on the roof and get a more accurate picture of what's going on. So with that, let's get a look at the roof under here, and then we'll head up on top and get a look at the roof from above. As you can see here, there are columns in the center of the building that support the main truss going across. Coming off of the main truss are smaller rafters that hold up the mid portion of the roof. We'll wanna make sure to get a good close look 
at how many rafters, what the spacing is, what the size is, and the general layout of the support structure of the roof. When taking pictures of the underside of the roof, it's important to grab photos of any major structural intersections, such as here where the column meets the beam, here at the wall, here where the rafters meet the main beam. We'll also want to get photos of the structural members around any sites such as this skylight. Without the necessary information, conservative assumptions often have to be made, which usually translates to a fewer amount of modules allowed to install in the roof. We also want to concern ourselves with the exterior walls of the building. In most cases, the exterior walls are holding the majority of the weight of the roof, which in turn means they'll be holding the majority of the weight of the PV system. Uh, it's crucial that the exterior walls of the building are rated adequately for the weight of, of the system. So we'll take some good photos of the exterior walls in order to do an adequate structural review. Now that we've got ample photos of the underside of the roof, let's get up on top and see what we're looking at. Now that we're up on the roof, let's take a quick second to survey the condition. If it's a newer roof, it'll be pretty easy to tell right away. If it's an older roof, you might see some spots or patches around, or if, in the worst case, uh, some rotting or potential areas for leaking. If that's the case, it's generally a good idea to get the roof condition taken care of either before or during the installation of solar. Once we've surveyed the roof condition, let's start taking measurements based on the outline that I drew up earlier. It's important to take note of any major roof obstructions, such as these vents, skylights, and HVAC units that we see here on the far end of the roof. We'll want to confirm any distances of those obstructions from either the edges or corners of the building. It's generally a good idea to pick one corner of the building as your reference point and measure all obstructions relative to that reference point. That makes it easier for engineers and drafters down the road to accurately translate that information into their CAD program. It's also a good idea to take note of any obstructions that protrude a significant amount above the roof surface, such as these vents, HVAC units, and this mechanical screen. Any obstructions with a significant height like this can and will affect the shading on the PV any PV modules that are installed nearby. It's generally a good idea to also measure the height of those obstructions as well as their X and Y coordinates on the roof. Getting an accurate survey of the roof and any obstructions on the roof is probably the most important part of any site survey. Without that information, it's gonna be very difficult to get an accurate feel of how many modules can fit on the roof. If we don't know the distances between the skylights to the edge of the roof or the HVAC units, a lot of those values would have to be assumed using aerial imagery, which can have 
margins of error as large as a foot or two, which could make the difference in a PV system that's trying to max out the square footage of the roof. Without that information, assumptions will have to be made, often erring on the conservative side, which will result in a fewer amount of modules on the roof than is initially desired. It's also important to take photos that accurately survey the entire roof surface. To do this, it's a good idea to take a photo standing at each corner of the roof, facing in the direction of each other corner of the roof. For a four-sided roof like this, that means that we'll be taking three photos at each corner for a total of 12 photos. While we're up here, it's also a good idea to take a look at the surroundings and make sure there are no large trees or other taller buildings or utility power lines that might cast shadows on the roof surface. Here to the south of the building are a few trees. Um, we can determine right now if we think they're gonna cause some shading. Uh, they look to be about maybe 30 feet uh, above the height of the roof of the building. Uh, what we can do with that is enter it into our modeling software, such as Helioscope, uh, and determine what kind of shading those trees might cause and create on the roof, if any. Uh, since the trees will already be in our aerial imagery, all we need to estimate is the height above the roof. We can plug that in and really determine if those trees will cause any shading. Now that we've gotten a good survey of the roof, let's get inside the electrical room and see what we're looking at. The first thing we'll want to do when we walk in is take a general photo of the room. Usually I like to stand in the doorway and take a photo as if I were looking in the room for the first time. This is a good idea because it gives whoever's reviewing this photo, the photos at the end of the day a good feel as if they were here with you. So here's the main switch gear. It's a good idea to get a good photo of the overall layout of the switch gear. As well as a close up of any meters so that we can see the meter numbers. And the main disconnect so we can identify it later. It's also important to take photos of any nameplate ratings on the switchgear, such as this one and this one. In the case of the switchgear has a distribution section, we'll also want to pull the main cover off of that and take a photo of any distribution breakers inside. If a load schedule is present, we'll also take a picture of that. Remember that the photos you take need to tell a story. They should be taken in such a way that someone who's never set foot in this room feels like they're there looking at the same equipment you are. This is important from an engineer's perspective because they need to be able to accurately identify every point on the switch gear and any potential points of interconnection for the PV system. If any sub panels are present in the system, we'll also want to take photos of those just like we did the main switch gear. Here's one directly behind the main switch gear. We'll also want to take a photo of the inside and any panel schedules present. I cannot stress enough how crucial it is to get all of the information pertaining to this main switch gear that we can.
When we're concerned with PV interconnection, it's important to know the amperage ratings, the voltage ratings, the service type, and any general layout of the switchgear that we can. Because it makes all the difference when we're deciding how to interconnect the PV system. For example, if a panel such as this one, which happens to be a 12208 volt rated panel, happens to also list 12240, it's important to make that distinction while we're on site before it reaches the engineers. The difference between a 208 volt panel and a 240 volt panel is enough to cause an issue when deciding which inverters to use for the system. If we don't know that information now, it could cause a problem later on down the road when the system gets installed and the inverters don't operate properly. If any other subpanels exist in the system, we'll also want to find their physical locations and take pictures of the insides, just like we did for the other one. Remember that photos from far away are just as important as photos close up because they give us a bigger picture of the surrounding conditions. This will allow us to later determine where the best location is for the new PV equipment. So I'm here back at the office having wrapped up the site survey and gotten all the information that I need. My next step is to import all that information into the CEPI portal. To do so, I can submit a new design. And as you'll see here, we have a lot of the same information that we had on our site survey checklist, including design name, drawing type, state, and module and inverter information. Here I'll input the module quantity and inverter quantity that I intend to use. I can also input the module specs by using this search function. If the search function fails me and I don't find the module that I'm looking for, I can always submit my own. It'll ask me for basic information like the manufacturer model number and the module power. The same goes for inverters. I can search the inverter using this search function or input my own if I don't see it in the list. I can also select the type of racking that I intend to use, whether it be flush mounted, tilt up, ballast racking, or any other supported method. Once I've submitted all of the basic information for the project, a new page appears showing me that same information that I just submitted, along with a lot of blank fields for all the rest of the information for the project. In order to input this information, We'll choose edit details at the top of the page, which will provide us with forms that we can fill in with all of that information. Once we've submitted all the information we need, we can initiate the engineers to begin the design and click save. That will refresh the page with all the information we would have inputted. A link will also appear, prompting us to upload any photos that we took out on the site as well as any other documents that we deem important to the project, such as this layout with the measurements that we took up on the roof. I've taken a photo of this, and I'll also be uploading this to the portal along with all the photos. 
That about wraps things up. Thanks for joining us. We hope you learned a lot about the ins and outs of site surveying. If you ever get stuck or you need help, please reach out, never hesitate to ask. We hope to see you next time. Take care.